What's going on guys, Cardouche here, and uh, I know, I know, the title of this video has gotten many of you confused, because if you've been on my channel for long enough, you know I hate these bullshit theory videos, and you're probably wondering, Carmine, I didn't think you would do one of these. What's going on here, bruh? Well, Greg, I'll tell you. Whenever a lot of my subscribers annoy me enough to do a video on a certain topic, I'll just do it. I'll cave into peer pressure like a skank and just do the whole thing. The theory topic I've chosen today is... Where the hell is Carmen Sandy? I, I mean, where the hell is Benjamin Stark? Some of you who only watch the television show have probably forgotten who this person is. Hell, I'm pretty sure some book readers have also forgotten who this guy is. And let me remind you, Benjamin Stark is Ned Stark's little brother. You see, Ned had three siblings, his older brother Brandon, his sister Liana, and his little brother Benjamin. By the way, that isn't Brandon's picture, like, like Brandon was never cast because it was like in the past. But the reason I put that there is because... Well, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you'll understand why. Extra points if you know why. But as we all know by, by now, most of Ned's family was fucked over during the whole Targaryen Crisis Civil War thing. His father and older brother were murdered by the Mad King, and his sister was allegedly kidnapped by Rhaegar. This all led to Robert's Rebellion and so on, we all know the story. Benjen was not active during the time of the Rebellion. In fact, he stayed behind at Winterfell while Ned was off fighting in the war. The reason he stayed behind is due to that whole thing about how there must always be a Stark in Winterfell. And when Ned came back, Benjen went off and joined the Night's Watch for his own reasons and soon became the First Ranger. When the series began, we see him in Season 1 for the first three episodes and he is never seen again. In fact, towards the end of the season, Lord Commander Jor Mormont leads a large ranging party beyond the wall to find out what the hell is happening with all the wildlings and to search for Benjen Stark and the other rangers who are also missing. Many fans have speculated as to where he is, and that is where these theories come in. One theory states that he is Cold Hands. For those of you who haven't read the books, you may not know who he is because the showrunners have excluded him from the HBO ad adaptation. The theory here is that Benjen encountered some kind of trouble beyond the wall, died, and after he was reanimated to fight for the White Walkers, the Children of the Forest used some kind of magic on him so he could resist being a mindless white. In the books, Cold Hands is originally the one who helps Sam and Gilly escape when they are attacked by Whites beyond the wall, and he also escorts Bran to the location of the Three-Eyed Crow. Even the television show went as far as giving Jon the task of defeating the traitors at Craster's Keep. In the book, Cold Hands is the one that takes them out. Once again, the theory here is that Cold Hands is secretly Benjamin Stark. The character has yet to reveal his face, because he keeps most of his body covered, but he wears the same outfit as someone who would be in the Night's Watch. That being said, there is almost no guarantee that Cold Hands is Benjen. Other than Cold Hands being a former member of the Night's Watch by talking to Sam like a fellow black brother and going out of his way to kill Carl and the traitors, there is really no guarantee. In the fifth book, one of the Children of the Forest says that Cold Hands died a long time ago. Well, the Children of the Forest have a long lifespan and it's highly unlikely that two years to them would count as a long time. The Child of the Forest who says this is over 200 years old. The final nail in the coffin for this theory is a story that was reported a while ago. A Reddit user visited the Texas AMA library to read the original manuscript for the fifth book. In the manuscript, there are multiple handwritten notes from George Martin's editor and him, and in them, when the editor asks if Cold Hands is Benjen, George writes back, no. So, if Benjen isn't Cold Hands, could he be Dario Naharis? The theory here has multiple ways it can go. For example, some readers believe that Benjen somehow has an alliance with Varys and Illyrio Mopatis and has traveled to Essos to help Daenerys Targaryen sail back to Westeros to help combat the coming threat of the White Walkers. Why would he be in league with Varys? Well, Varys is clearly a Targaryen supporter. Maybe Benjen is too, considering he may know the true identity of Jon Snow's parents. I'll get into that later on in the video. The main thing here is that Benjen is fully aware of the coming threat of the White Walkers, and he knows what can kill them. In Season 1, Episode 3, Benjen hints at the White Walker threat when he converses with Tyrion, meaning he knows something. He realizes that the Night's Watch would never let him leave his job as a ranger to bring her back, so he goes beyond the wall, heads east, and takes a ship towards Essos and tries to look for her in Pentos. He can't find her, but learns of her travels further inland. He gets his information from Illyrio, who is still being informed by Jorah. Eventually, he joins the nearest mercenary company hired by Yunkai to fight Daenerys and her Unsullied. Now, you're probably wondering, well, if Benjen is a Stark, wouldn't Jorah Mormont recognize him, considering Jorah is from House Mormont, a noble house from the north? 
Jorah would have seen him and recognized him, yeah, considering both men are old enough to have seen each other at least once, but there is also an explanation for that, and this is where Dario's disguise comes in. In the book, Dario looks like he's... in disguise. Dario is a Tairoshi, who dyes his hair and his beard blue and wears bright colors. The fact is, many Tairoshi people are like this. They love styling themselves in a unique fashion, and it's not uncommon to see people from that place looking like they came out of a costume party. And that's the point. If Benjamin were smart, he'd try and disguise himself in a weird style and just call himself a Tairoshi because... Fuck it, they're weird. Nobody can dispute that. By doing this, he would pretty much disguise himself well enough from being recognized by Jorah Mormont or even Barris and Selmy. Oh, and before I forget, earlier in the video I stated that there's a possibility that Benja knows the true identity of John's parents. Well, you know how Rhaegar supposedly kidnapped Lyanna and ran off with her? It's possible that Benjen saw her riding off with him, and when Ned came back with baby Jon Snow, Benjen probably put two and two together and figured it out. The one thing that is never made clear is that the extent of his relationship with Lyanna. Benja made fun of her when she began crying over how beautiful Rhaegar's singing was, and maybe, at some point, he realized that she was really in love with him, or maybe she confessed her love for Rhaegar to her little brother. We know that when she was kidnapped, allegedly, Ned was in the Vale, and Brandon was on his way to Riverrun. Benjen was most likely in Winterfell, and many readers speculate that Benjen allowed them to ride off together because he knew how much they loved each other. But let's move on to the last theory, which basically is a simple one. It states that Benjen was captured by the White Walkers and was made into one of their new commanders, or used as a sacrifice. In Season 4, we see a glimpse of what looks like a high-ranking White Walker commander or king. The theory here is that the old Stark bloodline is a strong component into how they would invade Westeros. Some readers, including myself, believe that the Starks somehow have an ancient connection to the White Walkers, or that the Stark blood have the answers to how to bring down the wall. The White Walkers cannot bypass it due to its magic. The only way to bring it down would be to melt it. In the Age of Heroes, the one who originally founded House Stark and built the wall was Bran the Builder. Maybe the secret to taking it down lies somewhere in the blood of House Stark, and Benjamin would be a perfect candidate for that sacrifice. One thing still remains though, we don't know where Benjamin is, and there are all these theories out there that several book readers have made up, and they're pretty interesting. Personally, I find the last one to be the most possible, but I can also understand the whole Dario theory too. We all know George loves to disguise his characters as other characters, and that nobody is really ever dead without a first-hand account. So it's possible that we'll see him again, and most likely not in some ditch with frost on his nose and the stab wounds all over his body. I mean, maybe in the television show we might see that, but uh, I, I highly doubt we'll see that in the books. And the reason I say this is because the showrunners keep forgetting certain characters that have made appearances before, and they probably won't finish up their plot lines. A few examples would be Gendry, Balon Greyjoy, and even Quaithe, the mysterious masked woman that appeared in Season 2 if you forgot her. I wouldn't blame you if you did. But hopefully we'll get answers very soon in the next book, whenever that's released. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video and want me to do more theory videos like this one, hit that like button and tell me which one you would like me to do next. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow me on Facebook and Twitter for every updates on the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, have a good one.